I'm still hearing a whole lot of WTF. Like, what the fuck? How could so many people support a guy like this? How could people be so stupid? I think we're not keeping up. I think it's time to get beyond that as a rhetorical question. It's not asked with curiosity. It's asked as a shock. And I think it's a real problem for us. And I have two solutions for it. Ways to get beyond this what the fucking that we keep on doing because it's not working and it's not helping. They even like it that we're doing it. Back when I taught psychology uh, to undergrads, on the first day of class, I would introduce them to the most popular idea in all of psychology. It's the, it's the most popular folk psychology theory. And I called it dipshit theory. We would go around the class. Everybody would start with a what the fuck question. How could someone like Nickelback? How could someone do this? How could someone do that? And then I would explain to them that the most popular folk psychology theory is dipshit theory. The answer is because they're dipshits. They're a different species from us. They're not like us. They're dipshits. And I'm saying that that's actually not a useful place to land. So the first move I would make around the WTF is to turn that rhetorical question into a real question. What the fuck is going on with them? What is going on with them? And to do it not as though there are different species, but to do it from your own experience. What it's like to be a human being. What it's like to have the emotional whirlwind that we have going on inside of us. And why Honestly, why any of us could fall for a thing like this, because if you'll notice, history is just filled with bubbles like this, where whole swaths of society falls for very Trumpian moves. There are things that are different about his moves from Stalin's moves, but at core, they're basically the same moves. So stop asking that as a rhetorical question, turn it into a real question, and get interested in it. Get post-angst. Get post-outrage. That stuff is actually an indulgence by now. It's a way of feeling grand about ourselves. What the fuck? I would never do that. I'm not like those dipshits. You know, that their, their egotism is beneath me. That kind of move is basically indulgent at this point, And it's keeping us from keeping up. And we need to. It's really important for our children, for the future, all of that, for the future of democracy. Okay. Here's the second move I would suggest. This one's based on me having been post-angst and post-outrage now for 25 years on this issue. And about 25 years ago, I was hit by this question, what is a butthead, since it can't just be whoever I happen to butt heads with? That is, how do you, what's really going on with them? It's a, it's a core of that book I put out uh, a few years back, What's Up With Assholes? How to Spot and Stop Them Without Becoming One. And I spend a good 250 pages trying to get clearer on what's going on with them, what's up with them. And then I get into how to spot and stop them. But only after trying to understand, based on my own personal experience as a fellow human being, what's going on with them. And most of our answers don't cut it. You know, that they're from a different tribe, that is that they, I butt heads with them, uh, that they like power. We all like power. Um, you know, just uh, early on in the book, I list a variety of popular answers that don't really cut it as a possible explanation for them. as a way of getting beyond the rhetorical indulgence in what the fuck is WTF. That is, the answer to the question is WTF. It's the wild card, trump card formula. Let me step back for a moment to say one of the most interesting paradoxes about the parasites who are narcissists is that you can't get them to look at themselves. Isn't that funny? We named the, the diagnostic term after a guy who couldn't stop looking at himself. And the last thing you can get a, a narcissist to do is to look at themselves. So there's a WTF question. Why is that? Why, do we, why is it so obvious that they are self-absorbed, but at the same time, they cannot look at themselves? They are, and here's a, here's a $10 word for you, isoptrophobic. It means they have a fear of mirrors. Isoptrophobic means a fear of mirrors. You could also call it autophobic. They're, they have a fear of self-knowledge. 
What they're doing is looking at an idealization of themselves. That is, they split their personalities between playing God by whatever standard, or God's ally if they're Trump supporters, but a narcissist could do it for no cause other than cause they said so. And why them? Because they're playing God. And they're playing God's fiercest defender. So if you attack their self-idealization, you're attacking God. So you see this in the Trumpists or the Stalinists. That is, they have identified with someone who they see as eternally right, righteous, and mighty, someone who can do no wrong. And through alignment, that means that if you're attacking them about anything, you're attacking God. So you, you could do this about uh, as a fanatic for some cult leader, or you can do it as a fanatic for your, your self-idealization. And I think that's what's going on with them. So you could call them autophobic narcissists or isoptrophobic narcissists, one way or another. And only this week did I notice that actually... Maybe that's what's going on with Dracula. He's a vampire. He's an energy vampire. And he cannot be seen in mirrors. That he's invisible. This is a human being who is hiding inside of a spiked suit of armor. They will tear you apart if you challenge them at all. They will get you to back off. Those are the spikes. But they're hiding inside of there. And why are they doing that? Well, you could say because they have self-doubt or anxiety. We all have self-doubt and anxiety, and we can all imagine compensating for it by playing God, becoming a legend in our own minds. That's something that humans do. But also the advantages of doing it, of hiding inside of that spike suit of armor, are immense. We talk like crime doesn't pay. No, crime pays really well. And so does being a narcissist, if you can get away with it. We have to stop pretending it's another problem with the, what the fuck? I would never do that. They're dipshits. They're a different species. We have to get to where we recognize how much fun, how much satisfaction one would get from being, from playing God and God's fiercest defender. What is that fun? It is the WTF. It is the wild card trump card formula. The wild card is I can do whatever I want. And the trump card is, whatever I do is unassailable. That is, you could not attack me. It is perfectly defended. It's a perfectly safe thing to do. I can do whatever I want, and I can do no wrong. Who wouldn't want that formula, the wild card trump card formula? It would be such grace, such freedom from anxiety. And so, of course, to do that, to claim that you have that exceptional authority, you can't afford to look at yourself. You will become autophobic. I think we are all autophobic to some extent. There are plenty of things about me I would not like to see. It would be buzzkill. You know, we talk like introspection is a, is a fruitful option. Know thyself. We don't pay attention to how much that costs us. I think of authentic introspection, really stepping outside of yourself to look at who you are, as a little bit like waiting for a biopsy result. That is, what if you should discover a fatal flaw? So I'm trying to say, it's terrifying to look at ourselves. It takes, it takes a lot of stone to be able to look at yourself. Or you could say a whole lot of safety so you can afford the time it takes to recover from your diagnosis of what you really are. It is not fun. You know, Socrates says the unexamined life is not worth living. That is wrong in two ways. One is most life is unexamined. You know, what are you going to say? A cow doesn't deserve to live? A cow doesn't examine itself. And the other is that the examined life is no fucking picnic. It's no fun to have to look at your stuff. So no wonder people would fall for any possible way to... Avoid the mirrors to become, I'm going to see if I can get that word out again, isoptrophobic, fear of mirrors, to take that all the way to the absolute extreme, and in the process, earn yourself a wild card trump card? It's not hard to see what's going on with these people. And then the question, what are you going to do about it? So these are people who stand in front of the mirror. They can only see the, the self-idealization that they've come up with for themselves, that they can do no wrong. They can do whatever they want because they're always right, righteous, mighty, and have perfect integrity because they say so. 
What do you do with a person like that? It's a really hard question, I've, I want to say. I would say it's the hardest question of all. And I would also say it's the 8 billion person question. It's the make or break it question for humankind, which is how do you humbly humble humans who will say or do anything to avoid human humility? And that's what we've got with the isotrophobic narcissist. That word is going to come to me. I'm, it's so, Sooner or later, it's going to f- flow off my tongue. Isotrophobic uh, narcissist. What do you do with them? You don't want to suit up in your own God-playing suit of armor. That's not going to work. They're better at it than we are. You know, we have active consciences. They have perfectly satisfied consciences. No deed too dirty for a saint like them because of whatever size self-idealization they come up with. What do you do with them? You look for chinks in their armor, and then you stick your finger in, and you do either of two things and everything in between. You kind of tickle them to see, hello, is there a human being in there? You can do this through gentle coaxing, through trying to, one way to do it is to talk to them in a flattering way, that is treat them like you're interviewing them and get them all confused with their hypocrisy. You can try that, it sometimes works, usually fails. Or you can try at the other end of the spectrum, which is you stick your finger in the suit of armor and poke them in the eye as harshly as you can. Because once you're addicted to the wild card, trump card formula, there's no reason you would elect to give it up. It's extraordinary power. It's extraordinary freedom. It's extraordinary freedom and safety. What any organism would want is total freedom and total safety. They're not going to give it up unless it costs them. So a good eye poke can also work. Will it work reliably? No. No, it won't. That's why I say it's the hardest question we're dealing with. How do you humbly humble humans who will say or do anything to avoid human humility? You know, I also hear a lot of people say you can't talk to them because uh, nothing works. Yeah, that's their point. If your goal is to maintain your wild card trump card, your only goal is to make sure nothing works to expose you to the human being you actually are. So that's why carrots and sticks are all you got. If you can't escape them, and we can't escape them. You know, live and let live is a breeze if you don't have to live with someone or their decisions. We're stuck living with their decisions. So I can't do live and let live. I can't resign myself, uh, uh, take refuge in pious failure. There's no talking to them. I have to try to figure out how to engage with them. And so far, the best I've come up with is to try to find the human in there through carrots and sticks, some combination in the research group. We have a study group, a free study group you could join that meets every other Sunday in the morning. And we just, we try to come up with better strategies for get connecting somehow with the absolutely incorrigible, the people who have made it their goal to be literally uncorrectable. And so we explore all the range of possible moves we could make in, in engaging with them because we can't do live and let live with them. And yes, we can have some faith that they will blow themselves up. These movements always do. But not before taking down a whole lot of innocent bystanders in the process. So I encourage you to join our study group. We don't take role. We don't share names. You don't, your, your privacy is maintained. I send out the occasional uh, potential read, reading, something that's interesting and relevant to this project of figuring out how to engage with, let's say, Trumpists or other absolutists. It's not about the lifestyle brand. It's not that I butt heads with them. I'm not trying to convince them to believe what I believe. I'm trying to see if I can find a human in there with some humble capacity for curiosity. Even a thimbleful will do. But not so they believe what I believe. I'm not coming at them with a spiked armor suit. That wouldn't make any sense with these guys. But how to try to tickle or jab them into some kind of awareness before it's too late. And like I say, I think it's already too late. And one of the main reasons it's too late is that we have been getting into our spiked suits of armor. Even the nicest, sweetest ones among us. When we ask that rhetorical question, what the fuck, how could people be such dipshits? 
I think that is not working. It's slowing us down. It's stunting our growth on the big question, the 8 billion person question. How do you humbly humble any human, you or me included, who will say or do anything to avoid basic, simple human humility? I think it's our civic duty. I invite you to join the study group. It's free. We're not taking role. You don't have to. Uh, you don't have to talk. We have spectators who come and join in. And basically, what we've got is people who are trying things out with real trumpets, like their neighbors, people from all over the country, and they come in and they bring out in what they've tried. And we talk about it strictly, strictly in terms of effectiveness. That is. Did, did we cultivate a little curiosity in them, a little doubt, a little receptivity to re-burden themselves with the anxiety that they sloughed off when they bought into the wild card trump card formula? When they stopped looking at themselves, uh, put their consciences into satisfied hibernation, no deed too for dirty for a saint like me, and then when all the way into the herobotic addiction. That is, they're robotically playing hero. It's an intense addiction. Uh, heroin was so named because it makes every user feel like a hero. I think Trumpism is a stronger drug. So how do you get through to people like that? That's a really good question. We need to answer it, and we need to stop playing around in the realm of the venting, indulgence in what the fuck how could people be so dumb let's move on let's get post angst let's get post outrage let's try to be more like criminologists you know criminologists don't wring their hands all upset that there are criminals in the world oncologists don't fret and and throw tantrums that there is cancer in the world let's do that about this cancer and here's why the only way fragile systems can ever sustain themselves is through checks in balance with each other. Balance checks. Nobody likes checks. So there's a reason why we don't like to be, we don't like to be checked. We like to be free and safe. We, we like that. So no wonder this is very much like a cancer. It's an unchecked power. That's what's the problem. Set aside their policies if they even have any. Set aside their political differences. Stop grandstanding about them. And notice this fundamental thing. We're a society that has to maintain itself on checks and balances. And these guys are looking for unchecked power. That's the only problem, really. And uh, it would be a problem if they were leftists. It would be a problem if they were religious. It has been a problem in both of those lifestyle brands too. It's just a fundamental challenge that we have, we're only beginning to address. So I invite you to address it with us. I dedicated my book to future psychoproctologists who will do a better job than I am at diagnosing, treating, and preventing assholery. I consider this the beginning of a very long, challenging campaign to try to figure out, once again, how to humbly humble humans who will say or do anything to avoid basic human humility. Please join us in that work. You may have exactly the insights we need next.